Hello, and thank you for joining us for another session of Echo Ministry. As you know, I'm Eddie Nichols, and this is one of my good friends, longtime friends, Fred McMullen. And we're here to just bring forth some teaching again. And uh, he have a couple of things he's going to start us out with. So go get your Bibles because you will need them. We always like for you to check the scripture for yourself. Don't take our word for it, but get in there and check it for yourself to make sure that what we're teaching you is accurate. So get your Bibles, and we're going to get straight to this teaching this session of Echo Ministry. Fred McMullen, how's it going, brother? Hey, man, everything's <laughs> fine. Just blessed to be here and glad hey, to be here. All right, all right. Today we want to start in the book of Exodus chapter 3, and we've been talking about the calling of God, and we want to look at today some of the people that God called, mm -hmm. and just look at some of the things that happened concerning their calling. Amen? Amen. Okay, so if you have your Bibles, Exodus chapter 3, beginning at verse 1, it reads as follows. It says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. Mm -hmm. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert. And he came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. Mm -hmm. And the an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked around, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that Moses turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush. And he said, excuse me, and the Lord said, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, draw not hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place where thou standest is holy ground. And God goes on to say, I am the God of, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land and a large land, a land flowing with milk and honey, until the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Parasites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now, let me stop right there. Now, notice here, God is dealing with this man, Moses. Uh -huh. Moses is going on with his daily life, like most of us, and he is just doing what he normally does. But he sees something that's a bit unusual. He sees a bush burning, which is not unusual, but the fact was the bush was not consumed. Right. Now, at this point, here's where you have to be careful. Moses could have kept on going or what he was doing, but the scripture says, Moses said, I will turn aside. And when it comes to the calling of God, you have to make a decision that I will accept the calling of God. I will obey God. Mm -hmm. So Moses decides, he says, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to turn aside and I'm going to see why this bush is not consumed. That's right. And when he turned aside to see, that's when God began to talk to him. Mm -hmm. Now, I brought that up for this reason. Can you imagine trying to tell this to some of your friends of God who <laughs> called you like this? Wow. Can you imagine you, you know, me saying, Eddie, you know, I was outside in the yard working one day, and this bush caught on fire and it wasn't burning. And when I looked, I heard a voice out of the bush mm -hmm. call my name. Uh huh. Can you imagine how your friends would respond to something like that? Right. But that's what happened to Moses. Amen. It's in the scriptures. Amen. And I'm saying this many times when God calls us, it's very difficult to share that with some people right. because it's God dealing with you in a supernatural way. And it's hard to explain to someone who is not familiar with God and not very spiritual. And so when you share with people who are not godly or who hadn't had an encounter with God, many times it's hard for them to really believe that that's what really happened. So if you've been called by God and these kind of things have happened, then you have to be careful with who you try to share it with because many times <laughs> you will get some strange responses. That's right. That's right. And Fred, it was something I was looking at. Mm -hmm. In the part where it says that he turned aside, mm -hmm. he made a decision in his mind to turn aside and see why this bush was not consumed, it burned and was not consumed. 
I noticed when he made a decision to do that, it talks about how the Lord looked at him mm -hmm. and saw what he was about to do when he looked and saw that he wanted to turn aside and see. In other words, he had made a decision, I'm going to go closer mm -hmm. and see why this bush <laughs> is not consumed. God stopped him and said, Moses, mm -hmm. Moses. Okay, so even in your calling, it don't mean you just get to approach and just go do whatever it is that you do. But there are some things about God you need to know. God told him, take off mm. the sandals that you have on for the ground you stand on is holy. So in other words, you make this statement sometime before. The first call is to holiness. To holiness. So you need to recognize that you're dealing with holiness and you're going to have to take off some things before you approach a holy God. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. That's how when you go through these books of the Bibles, you know, we start with Genesis, which is the mm -hmm. beginning. Then we start Exodus, which, which is the departure of coming out. Mm -hmm. But once God brought them out, the next thing he teaches is holiness. And that's what that whole book of Leviticus is about. That's right. You have to learn how to reverence God and worship God in a manner that's pleasing to God. Uh -huh. You don't worship God the way you think you ought to worship God. Right. God teaches you how he wants to be worshipped. How he wants to be worshipped. That's right. That's Amen. right. So he told Moses, he said, this ground is holy ground. Amen. It, may, it may look like all the rest of the other saying, but Amen. since God is on this ground, it's holy ground. He says, you take off your shoes Amen. and reverence this spot because God is here. Amen. And you know what? Just looking at time and everything, I think that's a perfect place just to really just hang in there and just finish discussing this Moses. Because okay. there's some great things with Moses. You know, when you start looking at calling, a lot of times, you know, people uh, look at their life and say, well, I'm not worthy. Mm. I can't do this or I can't do this or I have this problem and that problem. And we want you to look for yourself and just check out these scriptures you know, with uh, Exodus chapter 3 and read on a little farther and just look at some of the different things that Moses would have to deal with. And even before he got to that place, how he had different issues going on, his life wasn't perfected. Um, Moses had actually murdered a man. <laughs> exactly. You know, trying to settle a dispute. <laughs> now, can you imagine your mindset, I'm gonna settle a dispute by murdering somebody and getting them <laughs> off the scene. But then God, later on, after he had did these things, called him to do a service for him and for the people that he wanted to deliver. So Fred always used to say, you know, what you've done doesn't exclude you from what God have called you to. Amen. See, Amen. it doesn't exclude your calling. Aren't you glad that the mistakes that you made and the wrongs that you made doesn't exclude God's call on your life? He still want to use you and do miraculous things. He still loves you. He still want to use you as the deliverer sometime for his people out of the mess that they're in, for mm -hmm. sharing the gospel that they may be brought into freedom. Mm -hmm. How he want to use your life. And even at the point where you said, my, my life is not good for anything. God said, if you give it to me, your life in my hand, I can deliver my people with it. Amen. By the gospel. So that's a, that's a blessing. And awesome passage of scripture, man. I had never looked at it <laughs> to that point like that. But I mean, that, that's, that's a good scripture. And how even in our life, you know, when you start thinking about it. What was your burning bush? Exactly. You know, what was your what was your burning bush? What happened in your life? Because called of God, as he told you before, God makes his call election sure on your life. It's a sure thing. It ain't nothing you got to think about. Amen. But he'll do something supernatural. So when you think about that, what was your burning bush experience that caused you to say within yourself? I think I'm going to turn aside and see what <laughs> the cause of this is or what matter this is that I'm mm, dealing with. My God. You know, in saying that I can think about mine, I can think about <laughs> some of the experiences where it just caused me to think and say, what is this? I remember having dreams sometime about ministering in the gospel and waking up, you know, still ministering. Mm. And asking God, what manner of thing is this that's <laughs> happening to me? I ain't never did this before. What are you doing in my life, God? My. You know, and, yeah. and so that, that's so awesome. I mean, because even when you look at Moses, I mean, like I said, Moses killed a man, and then Moses said, You know, I, I can't even talk good. Mm -hmm. and, and when God first calls, we're so caught up in our flesh and our inability until we can't see ourselves doing those things. That's right. But it's God who's going to manifest. God will overcome any inability, all the inhibitions that you have within yourself. Mm -hmm. It's God who does this thing, and He works in us the will and the do of his good pleasure. So even though Moses killed a man, that didn't have anything to do with what God had called him to do. Mm -hmm. And I know we've all made mistakes. That's we, right. I've made so many mistakes, I couldn't even list them all. That's right. But that has nothing to do with what God has called us to do. Amen. 
Be blessed. See you next time.